When I first started picking my colors, you would think that it wouldn't be very difficult being that they're yellow squash, but I took my time and then I ended up using my Schmincke Indian Yellow, um, my Windsor Newton Gold Ochre, which is a nude color, and then I went back to my Ingram favorite colors, the Yellow Ochre, Raw Umber, and Ultramarine Blue. I think I ended up using a little bit of Payne's Gray, but um, that's pretty much the realm of where I stayed in within my colors. There might have been a little bit of green added in, but th this is the thing, it's like when I set out planning to do a painting, I don't necessarily always know ahead of time what I'm going to use. And to be honest, it's actually kind of difficult sometimes to even go back after I've done the painting to remember if I pulled in anything else. So <laughs> this is... Uh, my rather odd process, I'm not organized. I never claim to be organized. But you will see as we're getting started on this uh, watercolor and it is slightly sped up, but not very much. Um, I still wanted you to get the feeling like you could really see and were watching me paint uh, almost real time. Um, but my concept, when I first started working on this squash or these pair of squash was that, uh, I wanted it to be super loose and very relaxing, casual, free form. So yeah, just that sort of thing. And, um, so that's why I added so much water and was letting all kinds of bleeding go. And along the way, of course, when the, when the paper got overly saturated, I had to take the time to take my whole board over to an area where I like to dry. I have like a blow dryer and I really make it where it gets back to a nice taut um, version of itself and that way I can go back in and start adding details that I want to add. So when I first started off doing the actual details of the squash, you might actually think at first that I'm actually going in very dark but this is the trick of watercolor. If you've used them very much, um, they dry lighter than they look from the beginning. So it's a little bit of an illusion. And of course I use that to my benefit because technically if you were doing something completely realistic, looking at that squash that's laying on the paper, you will be able to tell that the squash itself comes forward and is lighter than the background yellow wash that's on the paper behind it. And that's how in looking at it, even through a video, you can tell where the dividing line is. Now there is no such thing as actual outlines in reality. If I look at a piece of fruit and you turn your head and you rotate yourself around it or you get up and you move and you move around it. You're not seeing any form of, any form of outline. What you're actually seeing are subtle definitions of values, lights and darks. And that creates an idea of form. But I did not want to make this study being too realistic. It was not really my goal. And often it's not my goal. So I just try to come up with basically a balance. That's, that's what I like to do in my own work when I paint this way.
And even when I'm moving into the shadows now, this is where I started putting in some of those red ochres and the ultramarine blue and a little bit of the, the gray, the Payne's gray that I mentioned before to try to create an illusion of that form rotating away from its core light. But again, as I said, I never really quite have a plan. This is all shot in the dark, learn as you go. And this is a compilation of all the times that I've painted before. I know what often success I've had in the past, like this dabbing technique. The dabbing technique kind of creates an illusion of all those variations on the form itself, especially when it comes to like a piece of fruit or a leaf or that sort of thing. All that dabbing is all the undulations creating a, a variation in the color and um, that sort of thing as, as that texture on the actual skin of the vegetable just changes slightly. I really liked that particular Windsor Newton uh, gold ochre color. It was really um, very complimentary, I felt, to the warm tones that I got as I moved away from the light. It just kind of made it um, a bit of fun. It made it pop, I feel. And the reason why, especially I feel the red ochre or the gold ochre uh, worked so well is because if you're looking at the squash on the left, the real squash that's on the paper, you'll see that there are those gold type tones um, because there is a secondary light in the room. It's very subtle, but it just helps my table be less dark. And that's where you're seeing a bit of that, that bounce from that warm light source. Now I did struggle a little bit with my shadows as well. I wasn't too sure about my shadows. And um, again, I was seeing warm tones and you know, you're, you're seeing that it's also dark. So I was playing back and forth as I often do with the shadows, uh, evaluating the color that I'm actually seeing on the, um, in the shadow shape, in the shadow areas. And so as I add all the, the variations, again, being Payne's Gray and a little bit of Ultramarine Blue, you get the idea of a shadow shape. But to be honest, I did not record both of these squashes being painted. So I'll just show you at the end a compilation of what they both look like I didn't feel like it was worth our time because both of them are were basically painted the exact same way. But I hope that you will find that this video is at least helpful or relaxing, if nothing. And I hope that you have a beautiful and blessed week. And I'll catch you next time, guys. All right. Take care. Bye.